Hey guys, and welcome to subtopic 3.7 on esters. This is our first science understanding. Carboxylic acids undergo condensation reactions with alcohols to form esters. You'll need to know how to identify, name systematically, and draw structural formulae of methyl and ethyl esters of acids containing up to eight carbon atoms in the main chain, with side chains limited to a maximum of two carbon atoms. Esters are formed from what we call condensation reactions. In the formation of esters, we call these sterification reactions. This occurs between alcohols and carboxylic acids, or alternatively, we can say that they form between hydroxyl functional groups and carboxyl functional groups. Below here, we've got a general equation looking at the formation of an ester from our carboxylic acid and alcohol. So we can see we've got our carboxyl functional group over here reacting with our hydroxyl functional group. Given it's a condensation reaction, we get the removal of a water molecule. So namely the hydrogen from the alcohol and the OH from the carboxylic acid go to make water. So that then allows for the carbon on the carboxylic acid to join together with the oxygen from the alcohol and it forms our ester as such here. And I've indicated the new bond being formed is in black there. If we talk about the naming process for esters, then firstly what we can see here is that a general carboxylic acid could be called an alkanoic acid. So underlined we can see the suffix that is used to identify carboxylic acids. And we've got an alcohol and we can think of its general name as being called an alkanol. So derived from an alkane but given it's got a hydroxyl group we end it in ol. In terms of naming the ester, we say that the ester is broken up into two parts. So the first part's derived from the alcohol, and we call it an alcohol group. So we will name it like a methyl or an ethyl group. The second part of the name comes from the carboxylic acid, and we call it an alkanoate. So the carboxylic acid group becomes more like a carboxylate ion, and so therefore it has the ending alkanoate. Before we have a look at some examples on how to systematically name and draw, we can say that esters are organic compounds that typically have characteristic odours, and this can be in products such as fruits, uh, vegetables, spices, herbs, and we typically put them in our perfumes. We can see from this image a, a range of different ester combinations and the characteristic odours that we may find them in. So now to our first example, we need to systematically name and draw structural formulae for the esters formed from these two molecules, so we've got methanol and propanoic acid. So firstly, we can see the structural formulae for our um, alcohol and our carboxylic acid, given as such. What we will then get is the formation of a water molecule from these three atoms here. So that's our condensation reaction. We get the joining of that oxygen with that carbon there to form our ester. And in terms of the name, so the first part comes from the alcohol component. So instead of calling it a methanol group, we call it an alcohol group. So it becomes methyl. Propanoic acid being the second part of the name, then becomes propanoate, like the propanoate ion. So overall, the name becomes methyl propanoate. And it's not necessary to have a space between the two parts of the name. For example, B, we've got ethanol and 2-methylbutanoic acid. So we start to see some uh, alkyl groups or side chains bonding to this parent chain for the carboxylic acid. Let's firstly look at the structural formulae for our reactants. So here's ethanol and here is 2-methylbutanoic acid. So our ester is going to form in very much the same way. So we're going to get the elimination of a water molecule. And then we have this carbon joining to this oxygen here to form our ester. We can see that new bond um, being shown in black. In terms of the name, so the first part comes from the alcohol. So name like an alcohol group, so ethanol becomes ethyl. And if we have a look at the second part of the name, it will be derived from 2-methylbutanoic acid. But instead of calling it butanoic acid, we'll call it a butanoate. So it becomes ethyl 2 methyl butanoate. Third example here, we've got methanol and 3 ethyl 2 methyl pentanoic acid. So we've got the structure of methanol here. We've got the structure of 3 ethyl 2 methyl pentanoic acid here. I've shown you the 
hydroxyl and carboxyl groups lined up in this fashion so that we can actually see that these atoms will be lost as water. We join this carbon to this oxygen. That forms our ester functional group, which is this here. In terms of the name, alcohol first is used, so methanol becomes methyl. And then our 3-ethyl-2-methyl-pentanoic acid becomes a 3-ethyl-2-methyl-pentanoate. Now on to example two, we're going to look at how to systematically name for the following esters. We've got a skeletal formula here, so the key thing is to be able to identify which part of our ester comes from the alcohol and which part comes from the carboxylic acid. So firstly, we've got our ester group, which sits here. We can see that this single bonded oxygen to this carbon would be derived from our alcohol. Whereas this carbon with this oxygen double bond, this section of the chain would have come from our carboxylic acid because carboxylic acids already have the C to O double bond. The first part of the name will be derived from this section here. So this section would resemble a methanol molecule, just minus a hydrogen because it's bonded to that carbon here in the ester group. So it's going to be called a methyl. The second part of the name will come from the carboxylic acid. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So this would make it a pentanoate. Therefore, the full name becomes methyl pentanoate. For part B, we've got this skeletal formula. So again, key thing is to identify where the alcohol and where the carboxylic acid component comes from. So we've got this being our ester group here. This single bonded oxygen will be the alcohol part. And then this section here will be the carboxylic acid part. So let's start off with the alcohol part. We can see that there are two carbons in the longest chain. So this would resemble an ethanol molecule. And so the name will start off with ethyl. If we have a look at our carboxylic acid, so this section here with this side group, this would have been derived from the carboxylic acid, which would be called 2-methyl, four carbon atoms here. So it's a 2-methyl butanoic acid. So we're just going to retain the naming. And so the final name will be ethyl 2-methyl butanoate. For part C, we can see the ester group is this one here. The alcohol component will come from this section with that single bonded oxygen. And this section with the carbon to oxygen double bond will be from our carboxylic acid. So starting off with the alcohol part, it's consisting of only one carbon atom. So that would make it a methyl group. And the carboxylic acid component we can see consists of one, two, three, four, five, six carbon atoms in the longest chain. If we name our carboxylic acid, we would have to account for methyl groups on these two positions. And they would be positioned on carbons four and five. So the carboxylic acid would have been a four comma five dash dimethyl hexanoic acid. And so therefore the name of this will be methyl 4,5-dimethyl hexanoate. For our next science understanding, we need to look at how to draw the structural formula of the ester that could be produced by the condensation reaction between a carboxylic acid and an alcohol given their structural formula or vice versa. So in this case, it may not be necessary to know how to name for the ester. It's just important to know based on the two structures how to draw the structural formula of the ester. So we're going to go straight into example three, draw the structural formula of the ester formed from the compounds below. Over this side, we've got a carboxylic acid. This side, we've got our alcohol. They're going to undergo a condensation reaction. So we're going to get the removal of water here. And essentially this carbon will then join to this oxygen and the remaining part of both molecules will essentially look exactly the same. So our ester will have this particular structural formula. This carbon has bonded to this oxygen here. So that's the new bond that's being formed. And then you can see the structure of our alcohol as well as our carboxylic acid has been retained. Example four, we've got this molecule, which is called aspartame. Aspartame is used as an artificial sweetener. The first thing that we need to do is identify where the ester functional group is. So then we can work out 
what carboxylic acid and what alcohol could be used to make it. So our ester functional group is actually positioned down this end of the molecule here. So we've got a COO group here. This section would be derived from our alcohol. The rest of the molecule, which is this big section here, is derived from our carboxylic acid. Everything else is going to stay exactly the same because you don't have any other ester functional groups here. So our carboxylic acid will consist of this section. It'll have this carbon bonded to us, uh, an oxygen double bond. We'll have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and then a carbon bonded to an OH group. So we have this section of the molecule that's our carboxylic acid. And this small section here will just be our alcohol. And hopefully you'd be able to see that this would just be methanol.